whether in relation to assignments, presentations or exams, things can often seem impossible, especially when they haven't been started. However, once you do get started and you get stuck into the task at hand, it always seems a lot more possible and achievable. This workshop will help you get a head start on exams and will hopefully make the task ahead seem a lot less daunting. As it gets towards the end of semester, when you have assignments to hand in and reading to catch up on, it can be easy to be overwhelmed about the prospect of exams. You may feel as though there is little time to prepare for exams and for some people it can be difficult to know where to start. This workshop will get you thinking about your upcoming exams and will provide you with some simple and effective ways to make exam preparation easier and part of your everyday routine. So here are Study Smarter's three top tips for getting a head start on exams. Firstly, plan for success, which is about approaching your revision for exams with a positive mindset and an outline of what needs to be done before exam day. Secondly, go into training, which is about making exam revision part of your regular routine. And finally, it is important to be cool under pressure, which is about getting the best out of yourself on exam day. So let's start with planning for success. Before revising, you need to identify what you're up against. You should carefully examine your unit outline, paying close attention to the learning outcomes, that is, what you are supposed to know and be able to do by the end of the unit, and it is also useful to determine how much each exam is worth for each of your units. Here is an example of how the learning outcomes may appear in your unit outline. You need to consider what each of them require you to know or do and how they relate to the course content. The exam weighting will highlight how much your exam is worth in relation to your overall grade and may indicate the amount of effort you need to invest in your exam revision. Past exam papers are another valuable way of getting familiar with what is expected of you. When examining past papers, it is useful to note the length of the exam, the weighting given to each question, the types of questions asked and the instructions. Past papers can also be used to get an idea of the depth and breadth of the study required. However, keep in mind that exam formats and course content may change over time. You can assess past exam papers from course materials online. To find out the details of when and where your exams will take place, go to Student Connect. Your personalised exam timetable will be published here around four weeks before the end of semester. You can also find general information about the exam periods, rules, grades and alternative exam arrangements. In order to plan for success, there are several things you can do. You can make a list of topics that will be covered in the exam. Give each topic a mark out of five, five being expert knowledge and zero being no idea at all. You can then organise this list with the zeros at the top so that it offers you a place to start your revision. It is also useful to make a study plan or reorganise your timetable so that it incorporates time for revision. Work out how much time you have and how much work you have to do. Then develop a routine that gives you variety and breaks. Think about when you study best and how long you can study for effectively. As you get stuck into training for exams, that is the exam revision itself, think about how you can study the course content most effectively. Reduce your notes from the lectures and readings and content from assignments into more manageable chunks. You may consider making summaries and putting the material into your own words. It's also useful to think of examples that resonate with you and to make connections between concepts and topics, trying to avoid things in isolation. It is also very useful to put yourself to the test. Practicing taking past exam papers may not feel like the real thing, but practicing under exam conditions will increase your awareness of how you perform under time pressure, and it will also highlight areas that may require further revision. Be aware of what you don't know, and make your weaknesses your strengths. It is also valuable to engage in active learning strategies.
The more active you are in your learning, the more likely you are to retain knowledge and recall information during the exam, especially if you engage in a variety of learning activities. So try to go beyond just reading by yourself and discuss your studies with other students, amongst other things. You may also find it helpful to use memory techniques to retain the course content. Mind maps may help you to look at the big picture and how things in your unit fit together. Mnemonics can also be useful, that is, memory triggers for recalling information. If you have a look at the example on the screen, Roy G. Viv is an acronym for the sequence of colours commonly described as making up a rainbow. Never Eat Soggy Wheat Bix is a mnemonic device used to remember the directions of north, east, south and west. Try to develop some memory triggers for your course content. When it comes to the actual exam day, it is important that you try to remain cool under pressure. This may involve being aware of your stress triggers and trying to avoid them. Stress releases adrenaline into your brain, which blocks short-term memory. It can also create a negative frame of mind, panic and poor exam performance. It is also important to remind yourself that it will all be over soon. Everything seems worse and more urgent when we're stressed, so learn to relax and keep it in perspective. Also, use your time wisely. Organise your life so that you can cope with the lead up to exams. An important point on exams is to remember that an exam isn't simply about studying or even understanding the material, but it is also about presenting specific aspects of what you know, in particular ways, at speed and from memory. This means presenting only what the question asks for in a manner that suits the exam type, whether it's a short answer response, an essay exam, a case study, or even a multiple choice question. It also requires you to present information at speed because there is limited time to think, plan, and write during an exam. And you're also relying on your memory because there isn't usually the time or the opportunity to look up things you can't remember, even in an open book exam. So let's look at some of the most common exam types. For a multiple choice exam, it is useful to prepare by knowing key words, definitions, processes and relationships between ideas, concepts and theories. During the exam, read the question stem carefully and Answer before reading the alternatives. This allows you to make a clearer and more accurate choice. If you don't know the answer, you may consider narrowing down your options, making an educated guess, or coming back to it later. It can often be useful to circle any questions you're unsure of and return to them later, as getting stuck on hard questions can often be a waste of time and can make you feel anxious. When it comes to short answer exams, they tend to require factual information and description. They may require you to provide definitions of critical terms and offer some interpretation and analysis. In short answer exams, it is important to get straight to the point, as marks are given for key words. There are usually a specific and countable number of points to make for short answers, so as part of your exam revision, lay out and number the information required for likely answers. It is also important that you don't waste words, so practice writing precise, concise answers at speed and check for wordiness and unnecessary detail. You may also find it useful to use dot points and diagrams in your short answers where you feel it is appropriate. Case studies require you to practice applying knowledge and your thinking, reasoning and decision making skills to a real life situation. They require you to summarise events by providing an overview of key words, phrases, people, positions, timing and key trends. They require you to define central issues and or problems, as well as analysing and applying theories, ideas and knowledge that was discussed in the unit. They also require you to make recommendations and detail how solutions may be implemented. 
When it comes to exam essays, a good essay is precise. It sticks to the question and answers it precisely by providing information that is relevant. A good essay is also clear in the language that it uses. It has a clear argument or perspective so that the examiner knows from the outset what you plan to say. A clear structure will then allow the examiner to trace the development of your argument throughout your essay. A good essay will also be well argued. It should be critical and analytical and engage with debates on the subject, explaining why something is significant rather than simply describing what research there is or what theorists have said. A good essay will also provide reasoning and sound evidence. We hope that you've enjoyed this Study Smarter screencast and remember, you can get a head start on your exams by planning for success, going into training and being cool under pressure.